emergency medicine. More than 300 people have died this year as a direct result of long waits in Scottish a &E departments. I, I, if it's the Royal College of Emergency Medicine study um, that I think it is, and it may not be, maybe another one, then it's an extrapolation based on a UK-wide study. But waiting times for treatment in accident in emergency units in Scotland, as is the case across the UK, are longer than anybody would want them to be right now. The waiting times for treatment more generally because of the impact of the pandemic, because of the backlog created, are longer than any of us want them to be. That's why we have an NHS recovery plan in place. Uh, we're targeting a 20% increase in NHS resources over this parliament. We have our budget on the 9th of December, which but will make a 300 significant... 300 extra deaths well, because of these... Oh, oh, oh. That's an extrapolation, and but I, if, if people are waiting longer than they should be in accident emergency, I'm not going to sit here and say that that doesn't create mm. uh, risks for patients. That's why we are working hard. We have mm. the recovery plan. We have also invested heavily in a winter uh, plan for the NHS, which right now is funding the recruitment of extra NHS staff, is raising uh, the pay of uh, some social care workers, is right. heavily okay. investing in okay. trying to reduce delayed discharge. These are really serious issues your, uh, your, that we treat extremely seriously. Your government has already cast doubt on, the, on this data. And so I spoke to the Royal College of Emergency Medicine and they said this, attempts have been made to discredit this data. However, patient base as well as patient care pathway in both Scotland and England are largely identical. It is therefore extremely likely that the associations between crowding and mortality are transferable to a Scottish context. We've had a discussion with one of the authors who absolutely agreed that the method is applicable to Scotland. So I say again, 300 people Andrew, dying as a direct result. For, for the avoidance of doubt, and if it sounds, I'm, I'm not trying to discredit the data, I was simply making a point, but okay. it, it stands to reason, Andrew, we have uh, waiting times targets, the four hour target in A&E, &E, um, and you know, Scottish A&E <laughs> units uh, perform better than counterparts across the rest of the UK, but not good enough at the moment. So we have those targets for a reason, and therefore it stands to mm. reason that if we're not meeting okay. those targets, then patients are not getting the standard of care that they should be, which is why we are working so hard with the health service, with with the extra investment and other initiatives to try to get those waiting times back to where we want them to be. I'm, I'm asking you because you are in charge of all of this and Absolutely. it's clearly not good enough. We've been trading statistics and so forth, but this is real people's I, I've lives. I've not been trading statistics. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm actually, uh, yeah. But a, a pensioner from Glasgow died after waiting 40 hours for an ambulance. And there was an 86-year-old woman in Edinburgh who had to wait eight hours for an ambulance after falling and breaking her hip at home, no doubt in great agony. All across Scotland, there are some terrible stories and Absolutely. the NHS is simply not working well enough. Well, can I say, firstly, you, you put it to me that I'm in charge as if I was somehow denying that. I'm not. I'm in no, charge. No, I'm... I, I unreservedly accept the responsibility here. And my responsibility with my government is to address these challenges in the NHS in Scotland. These challenges have, in some cases, been created, in other cases, been hugely exacerbated by a global pandemic that we are still living through. These challenges in the NHS, which here in Scotland are my responsibility, are not unique to the NHS in Scotland. Right across the UK, Europe, the world, health services are facing these challenges. That is why it's, we are... It's also about resources inside the NHS. Mm -hmm. And in the 14 years of SNP administration, there are now 1,358 fewer emergency beds in Scotland than there were when you started. Why is that? Well, bed numbers, acute bed numbers in the NHS in Scotland and the NHS in England, I think Wales and Northern Ireland, since long before uh, the SNP was in government here, have been declining. The reason for that is changing patterns of care. So things like cataracts, mm. hip, knee replacements. Yeah. Previously, I remember my grandmother but, getting a cataract operation uh, years and years ago, about 20 plus years ago. She was in hospital for days. Now you're in and out in the same day. So, so that's that's why we have seen that trend. If you're waiting for care in Scotland, but, these comparisons don't really matter, well, do they? I, what matters is what happens to you. Sure, but and I'm the Royal to College explain... of Emergency Medicine, who are the people who are experts in all of this, mm -hmm. say that you need a thousand extra beds in mm -hmm. Scotland to start to change the backlog yeah. and re reduce these terrible so extra deaths. I'm trying to engage so, with the so issue and, 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 and explain the trend, which again is not unique to Scotland. But uh, where we are right now, I mentioned the NHS recovery plan. So we are targeting, with the investment we need, a significant increase, both in 
inpatient and outpatient capacity in the NHS. The thousand beds, if, if you take at that, we need to create that capacity in a number of ways. Genuine extra capacity is one of the ways. Reducing the number of people who are currently occupying hospital beds because of COVID. So there are over 700 hospital beds right now occupied by COVID patients, rightly and properly, because they need care. If we get COVID cases down, we free up that capacity. And there are over a thousand people in at hospital right now uh, who don't need to be there. They are what we call delayed discharges, which is why currently we're investing in extra care home placements and extra care at home packages to get older people in particular care in the settings that is most appropriate for them, but then free up those hospital beds for those who need them. So this is but really important work that we're um, doing. Governments everywhere are having to do this. And you're right to say it's my responsibility, which is why it's my focus each and every single day. Harping yet again on those 300 extra deaths, that suggests this strategy just isn't working. It's, well, no, it doesn't, Andrew. It suggests that there is a massive COVID-created or exacerbated problem in the NHS in Scotland as there is in health services across okay. the world. And we are taking the action to try to deal with that, to get our NHS through what will be a, an incredibly challenging winter, but into recovery and onto a sustainable footing. Let is it good enough right now in Scotland and probably in any other country because of COVID? No, but the duty, the responsibility for leaders like me is to make sure we're doing what it takes to support the NHS through this. Let's talk. About